we have arrived at episode 8 of Desperate Housewives, the game. We're gonna start playing. What two gifts does Brie receive every Valentine's Day from Rex? I don't know, chocolate and flowers? I don't know, really. Whoa, Lynette talking to Edie? Alright. Let's see what Rex gives to Brie every Valentine's Day. Roses and English toffee. Yeah, well, chocolate and flowers, right? So, we're here. And we are going to buy CD. <coughs> and out blackmail Miss Savage. We're going to go get, oh yeah, we're getting Bree's help. Well, Bree is probably good at this. Actually, I don't know if we're getting any in-game sounds now, but... Typically something you want to ask Bree about. Knock knock. Bree, please help me blackmail people. Bree's like the perfect person for this, actually, for real. Hello, Bree. Oh, hello. Nice to see you. Oh my goodness, Bree. Where did you get that cute outfit? It's the exact same as she always has. Well, is everyone sitting around at home? Thank you. It's something I just picked up downtown. It's from their fall collection. You must take me shopping with you next time you go. Anyway, I was wondering if you could tell me something about the student teacher at high school, Miss Savage? Oh my. Is Tabitha teaching? I guess her father must have pulled a few strings. Really? Why would he need to do that? Well, about five or six years ago, it was an awful tragedy. Tabitha was in this dance class that Danielle was taking. Oh, she seemed really sweet and took the class very seriously. I think she was contemplating a career in dance. Okay. I never heard about any family tragedy. Do you plan on giving me details or do I have to coax them out of you? Bree, get to the point! What was tragic? What does this have to do with her getting into college? Oh, I'm sorry. I just got thinking about what a little doll Danielle was in her tutu and ballerina slippers. Anyway, Tabitha's little brother. His name was Corey. He was only 18 months old. Tabitha would babysit while her parents worked late. Well, one night, Rex got a call to come to the house. Apparently something had happened to Corey. By the time Rex got there, Mr. Savage had gotten home from work and Tabitha was in hysterics. They found him dead in his crib. It must have been awful for them. Rex was really affected by the event as well. Oh, that is terrible. What was the cause of death? Did Rex confide in you? I can imagine. It's always unexpected and devastating when a child dies. Well, that's just it. Rex was always strangely quiet about what really happened that night. I just assumed it was SIDS or something. It was no more than two days later that Tabitha was sent off to a dance camp in Europe or something. We never did find out exactly what happened or where she went. But when she came back, she was a different person. Cold. Barely ever smiled anymore. Uh, I guess she somehow accidentally killed Corey? I mean... Tabitha was smoking and dressing like a punk rocker. She was different. Sounds like she altered everything just to um, protect herself, kind of. So she made this hard, cold outer exterior. I always wondered if maybe Tabitha was somehow responsible for Corey's death. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it. Sounds like she was responsible. can imagine what a tragedy like that could can do to a child. Tragic and devastating. Tabitha really became one of those kids on the fringe after that. That's why I'm surprised she even went to college, let alone finished it. I can't imagine she'll make a very good teacher either. I certainly wouldn't trust her with my children. Oh, I'm sorry. Is she teaching one of your son's classes? Yes, he's a student teacher for college English. She doesn't seem to like the, his prose very much, apparently. Thank you so much for the information. 
<coughs> All right. So what do we do now? Do we call her? Or what do we do? I guess. So be sure to make your decision after weighing both options carefully. Some incriminating information that can be used to blackmail her into backing down from her demands. Let's call her and see what happens, I guess. Oh, hello, it's you again. Hi, how are you doing? Cut the crap and tell me if I'll see your son at tomorrow's tutoring session. I'm eager to show him some new study rooms. You win. Oh, you might see him again, but it's strange. I saw Brie in the Vandy camp earlier and we had a little chat. I think I actually chose the other one last time I played, but... Bitchy mom, here I go. <laughs> Babysitting days. It was a very interesting conversation. I learned about your little brother, Corey. Tragic what happened to him, wasn't it? Yeah, you're a friggin' bitch. I'm gonna bitch back. Yeah? So what? That, that was a long time ago. Did he break up with Allison yet or not? I don't have time to gossip with you about my childhood. You really don't want to talk about Corey, do you, Tabitha? Just what did you do to him? I think your childcare exploits are far more interesting than anything involving my son. Perhaps you'd like to tell me the truth before the school board finds out? He had that, what's it called? Crib death, right? He just stopped crying all of a sudden. I thought he was fine. I didn't mean to do anything to him. That's funny, because Bree's like, husband, Dr. Vandycamp, seems to think otherwise. After was another explanation, I wonder if he wrote anything in his diary about the incident. Listen, lady, I was only 14. My father told me it would be okay. I didn't mean to hurt him, but he wouldn't stop crying. I just wanted him to shut up. Uh, stay away from my son. Uh, you can't do something that, like what you did and get away with it. If you leave my son alone, I might be willing to forget some things. I want to make sure that I stay quiet as well. I don't think you and your father want to be investigated. If you leave my son alone, I I'm, I'm, might be willing to forget some things. He's gonna bitch. Alright, alright, you win. I'll back off and let him do what he wants. Wise well, choice, Tabitha. I'll be keeping my eye on you. Woohoo! <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your son still liked you. He should be home from studying, so you meet him back at your house and confront him about his dishonesty. But I think we have to buy the CD first, right? Let's go buy a CD. Let's go to town and shop. It's always fun, right? Go to mall. Ah. Uh, I wonder what the police are doing here all the time. Okay, so where do we buy odds and ends, maybe? We can sell... Sell it. Eh. A temps. Oops. I don't want to sit down. I want to buy a free and CD. Salon Lit. Beverly's Boutique. Fairview Pharmacy. McAllister Fashion Outlet. So, where do we buy the CD? There wasn't. There wasn't a link there, right? There wasn't a link there. How do we get the CD? What? It's not going to be anything here. No. I don't think the pharmacy will have it, right?
blocks of chocolate, perfume, herbal tea. I don't think so. And Beverly's Boutique doesn't have it either. So where do we find the CD then? I thought it would be on the internet, but there wasn't really a link there. I couldn't click on anything, right? Right, I guess we, um, we'll just go home and talk to Riley then. Hello, maid. Why are you just standing there doing nothing? Really? Really? Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, whoa, no, he's coming out here. Did you need something else? I think there may be one more dirty deed that needs to be done. An excellent job. Well, I'll be leaving then if you have nothing else for me. I wanted to go to the grocery store before my family comes home. Not that she's actually going anywhere, but Did let's you need something else? try it. Um, what sort of deed? I'm pretty sure the whole house is in order. <laughs> Actually, maybe a shower would be better. I did work up quite a sweat cleaning your house. Shower sounds pretty good right now. Meet me in the bedroom so I can get you out of those clothes. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> god, what did I just do? <laughs> I'll be getting back to my duties now. My pleasure, ma'am. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that was fun. I love that you could even do that in this game. That was hilarious. That was so awesome. That was so awesome. Okay, son. Why have you been lying to me? Talk hey, Mom. What's for dinner? Uh, pass it then, Riley, but before you go inside, I'll have, I'd like to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you. Sure, Mom, whatever. What's up? I had a long conversation with Miss Savage on the phone, and she told me everything. Everything? What did she say? Tell more about your secret relationship and her surprising hatred of Allison. The tutoring sessions that she hasn't seen you in a few weeks. Well, I started hanging out with Allison a lot, and I just couldn't keep both things in my schedule, you know. It's pretty unusual predicament. So you ended your session with Miss Savage, and your grades started to drop. Yes, I know. Well, I just started to feel kind of creepy with Miss Savage, and Allison and I get along so well. Well, I can sort of understand. I know it can get confusing being a young man at this time in your life. I negotiated an understanding with Miss Savage concerning all of this. You just keep dating Allison. You should leave. She should leave you alone from now on. Okay, Mom. I'll try to be more honest in the future. This was just sort of an uncomfortable situation. Can Allison sleep over this weekend? Don't push it, kiddo. <laughs> Life is filled with difficult choices. And with every one of these choices comes the risk of regret. Regret can remind us of past mistakes in order to avoid making the same bad choices in the future. But sometimes we are forced to live with our mistakes and face the compromises we made, the ones that seemed reasonable at the time, the ones that sometimes rear their ugly heads in ways we could not imagine and cause us to regret once more. Whoa, what is going to happen now? Who brought a broom to clean up the scene of Mrs. Elise's car accident? Bree? <coughs> well, I don't think we're done with Tabitha. Drama! Lynette. Alright. 
My good friend Bree Vandekamp's dinner parties were always the talk of Wisteria Lane. She prided herself on the perfection of everything in her home. From being the perfect host, to making the perfect hors d'oeuvres. Although she was comfortable in the knowledge that she threw the best dinner parties on Wisteria Lane, Bree didn't consider herself a competitive person. However, sometimes all it takes is one little thing for someone's true nature to be brought to light. Hey, welcome. I am so glad you could come. Whoa, drama. See here. These days, it's harder on me to get here with the family and work and everything. Oh, Edie is here too. Oh, I know how you feel. Between work, lunch dates, dinner dates, late night rendezvous, and the occasional breakfast and bed special, I hardly have time to myself. Edie. What? On that note, have you played Texas Hold'em before? Uh, all of your information is located in this area. Here we'll find your purse and your cards. All right. This is the deal maker. It designates which player is currently the dealer. All positions are available. Well, you may cheat in a variety of ways. You may peek at your opponent's cards, stack the deck, putting the cards in your favor, stir down an opponent, cause them to fold, or kick an opponent, cause them to call. Whoa. Uh, alright. What is happening? Oh, play. Alright. Um... Race or call? Mm, call, I guess. Oh, here's my card. Here are my cards. Um, what is even good to get? High stuff. Fold. How do you even get good stuff? What's what's good? I don't understand what's happening. Wait, Gabrielle wins because... Why does she win? It didn't even explain how you win. Wait, two pair, pair queens, pair queens. Oh, they're- oh, pairs. Oh yeah, she got the queen pair and stuff. Okay, you get pairs and stuff. Alright. Not a bad first round there. <laughs> So, seeing as how I won't be able to come to poker night for a while, what do you ladies think about perhaps inviting Daniel Fox? Hmm. Um, that's no reason to leave an open seat. Besides, it'll be fun to have a male opinion around here, even if it's more likely an opinion criticizing our makeup choices than anything else. Uh, play.
Does not look very good, right? Let's fold. No, I would never not have won anything on that. The net wins because she has pair kings. Okay, so you want to get pairs basically, and you want to get high pairs. All right. Wow. Wow. Personally, I love that we're inviting Daniel. He's got to be more fun than you all. I know. He's different than most of the men around here. But it's not the poor guy's fault he's got more style than anyone in this room. Oh, no offense, Gabby. And Bree. <sighs> okay, no offense to anyone. It's not like he's intentionally trying to show off by doing things better than you. Take your foot out of your mouth at any time, Mayor. Wait himself the entire, entire table, Susan. You know what Susan. I mean. Of course we do, Susan. You're not worried because you have nothing to lose. You've already driven every straight man in your life away. Ante up. You are probably better off anyhow, Susan. You probably driven some straight men to the dark side yourself, Edie. Anyways, how about another hand? Let's play Jack. Call. And uh, call. <coughs> that does not look good. Let's fold. Skip turns. Yeah, that was not good. Frost. You had two pairs. Pair six. Pair six. All right. Another hand. Well played. It's not that I don't like Daniel. I'm just not used to feeling like I'm competing with a man in that department. I know what you mean, Bree, but trust me. If a gay guy is really competing with you for a man's attention, there's probably something you don't know about that man. I mean, haven't you heard of Gaydar? When I saw him shopping last week, his clothes were just so perfect. Even the straight men were looking at him instead of me. That's never a problem for me. How can you guys be so sure he's gay anyhow? It's not like he's done anything that you could definitively reason one way or the other. Yeah, exactly. Uh, call. Yeah, call. Yeah, let's play. Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah. Go with that. Let's go. Um, oh, she had a full house. Damn it, ED1. Okay, let's exit game then. It's about time I headed home. Good night, all. Alright. And we will break. take a break here. Check our goals. Oh, we didn't do the CD. Crap. Get ruffled feathers. Speaking with Daniel about this might alleviate future hurt feelings. Alright. So, let's take a break here. <coughs> and... See you in the next episode, so thank you guys so much for watching, and take care of yourselves.